Hello everyone. Now I know I've shown you this heat pump before and if you recall the last video I explained how it had a variable speed compressor and a variable frequency drive but there is another unconventional aspect to this air conditioner heat pump and that is the refrigerant that it uses. Now a lot of you who are into refrigeration know that there has been a ban on R22 and it doesn't use that. And a lot of you in refrigeration also know that usually the replacement for residential refrigerant would be R410A, but it doesn't use that either. This uses a refrigerant that is most commonly used in refrigerators and freezers and industrial chillers. This heat pump does in fact use R134A. I've done research on it and I've heard a lot of reasons why you shouldn't use R134A in a residential heat pump but I decided to try it anyways. Today we're going to see the heat pump run in cooling mode. It's about 90 degrees outside. We're going to take a look at what the temperature controller, how that is controlling the speed of the compressor and I'm going to show you the pressures and show you some of the temperatures and just give you an idea of what this machine can do with R134A in it. Okay, before I started it up, I wanted you to notice this. That is actually condensation on the compressor. It hasn't been raining or anything. And this is due partly to the fact that R134A has such a low heat of compression. The compressor runs really cool. It's really humid out today, so it's not unusual to see it sweat. A lot of other compressors, when they're working hard, especially in heat like this, they get really red hot. And that just tends to break down the oil and it really shortens the life of the compressor. Now, let's turn it on and see what kind of pressures and temperatures we can produce. Alright, now it's running. Now, again, I say this is a variable speed compressor. It will change speed. So that's probably what the funny noises you're going to be hearing. And if the pressures fluctuate a little bit, that's normal. But as it stands, this is where we're running. So speeding up is pulling down a little bit. Side pressure. That's about 52 degrees. What's that going on here? See, that's about, looks like about 95, 90. That's not too bad, especially considering it's 90 degrees out here right now. But it's running really close to minimum output. If we really cranked it up, we could probably get up there pretty high. I know it could go past 100 pretty easy. Let's take a look at what the motor controller is up to. This is what the motor controller is up to. It usually doesn't hunt this much, but I turned it off for the video and then turned it back on, so usually gets settled down finds its spot somewhere between 30 and 40 Hertz it's a temperature controller and that is the actual temperature the set point is 13 so it's right at 13 you can see it's the output is right in the middle and it's just gone up so it's going to increase but According to that actual temperature, that means that the evaporator inside and the suction line, because the bulb for this is on the uh, actual suction line near the compressor, 
that indicates we have a very low superheat, which in a way is good. It means the evaporator is full, we're getting the full use of it. And it hasn't settled down yet. Eventually it will. I disrupted its cycle. Let's check the air temperatures. All right, this is the temperature that's coming out of one of the vents inside the house. The indoor temperature as indicated by the thermostat is 76. It is set for 75. And it's coming out at 56. 7.7. It's 14.3.4 Celsius. And it's 90 degrees outside. So, as I said, we got little superheating, if any, even in the aspect of it coming out of the actual register. It's still not that far off from what the saturated um, evaporator pressure is or saturated suction pressure either so it's running pretty much the evaporator is pretty much full of liquid yeah, it's not too bad this is the best part about it you guys this is the actual current coming out of the circuit breaker that goes to the variable frequency drive so and to the condenser fan so it actually doesn't use all that much power to do this but this is running at minimum right now on cooler days in the 80s 75 it actually uses even less than this you usually see current around three amps three and a half amps so this is 90 degrees and it's running at four and a half and from the old two ton unit that I used to have it would be 10 even on a cool day so this is proven to save a lot of power. Now just for fun, let's crank it up. Check out what it can do. And that's what it's like running at full power. Let's take a look at the pressures. All right, this is full power. So you can see we've dropped and then we've increased slightly on the high side but it actually keeps it pretty well under control you don't really see a big difference in the high side pressure but you can definitely feel the high side temperature goes up the condensing unit is really pushing out a lot of heat now at minimum output the pressure is relatively the same doesn't change much but you can definitely feel a difference in heat so the subcooling is a lot lower when the frequency is higher but it's all right because we're still getting pretty good temperature here and yeah, we're still sweating all the way back so it looks pretty good all right and this is what the temperature sensor probe on the suction line is reporting 11 Celsius so when the compressor is at full speed, the superheating goes up and the subcooling goes down, which is pretty normal. But I'm going to turn it back to the normal setting now. We don't need it to be running at full output all the time. Get it to 14 Celsius. That's good. So. That's the heat pump. It's about a 310 heat pump. Variable speed compressor. It's just a reciprocating compressor with a variable frequency drive. And R134A. So, seems to work no problem.
So that about does it for this one, guys. I will be making more videos. I'll be making more electronic videos, don't worry. Comment message if you have questions, and I will see you soon.